What is the main cause for divorces? What's the main cause for divorces? Yeah. Cheating, no? Marriage? <laughs> <laughs> God save for fuck's sake. You're watching the Gog Pod. Today we have been joined by Billy Mehmet, formerly of West Ham, Dunfermline, St Mirren, a whole host of clubs over in the other hemisphere and uh, he's currently at the club in Northern Cyprus, Merit Alsenchak Yeshilova. Did I nail the pronunciation? Yeah, that's all right. That's all right. There we You've go. Got it right, we'll mate. take that. Spot on. And he's also a Passamike super fan, so this is this, this is going to be a belter, mate. Um, so before we start, uh, I would like to bring up that in the past, we've had quite a few conversations. Uh, but the first thing you, you ever said to me was, uh, well, you, you came across a podcast that I'd done with my friend uh, Jamie Forrester, who's a Mad Dunfermline fan. And uh, we we pretty much talked about you for about five minutes in our re podcast. Yeah, how, I remember it. I remember it. Like. How did you come across it? That's so, it's so strange because I was looking um, at like, I think I was searching for videos of myself. I know it sounds a little bit ego, <laughs> ego but it's not actually because I was looking to make a video of my goals. Um, and yeah, I came across, it just said like dumb firmly or something. And I, and I just saw two guys uh, that was talking. So I just started listening. And then, yeah, all of a sudden you mentioned my name and I was thinking, I think that's a bit of a shock. And um, yeah, you were sort of caning me a little bit, <laughs> and then and then you st started saying some good things. So yeah, that's how I got in touch with you, and that's how I um I told you where I was playing there because I'm sure you tried to Google where I was playing at the moment or something like that. I because because uh, like that this was one podcast I always thought would be fantastic because you've travelled the world, it's like you've you've been absolutely everywhere. So it's an absolute <laughs> honour to have you on. <laughs> Football slut, mate. Football slut. <laughs> I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, of course, you began your career at West Ham United and spent your youth in London. Uh, how did the opportunity come about to play in the academy? So, basically, when I was young, um, I was playing for a um, like a Sunday league team. Um, and like just like a, a young boys team, really, that like you would say back in Scotland. And... Um, yeah, I was playing for a team called Athenley, and then I went to a team called Beckenham Town. And while whilst I was at Beckenham Town, um, I was scoring a lot of goals and uh, playing really well and stuff. And I started getting scouted. And to be honest, I didn't really know what it was all about. I I just wanted to play football for the team I was at, like. And um, yeah, anyway, there was there was a lot of clubs that that came in for me, and um, I ended up going to West Ham on trial. Um, and yeah, I think I went there for maybe a week or so. And then after the week, they, they offered me a contract, like a, like a two year contract, a three year contract. I can't remember how it worked out back then, but it was, um, obviously it was like a role, like rolling basis. If I'd done well over the two, three years, it will continue and stuff like that. But at the time you didn't actually play for West Ham. You still continued playing for your team. You only went to training for West Ham. So it was basically nothing really it wasn't like I played for West Ham I was just training with them yeah um and then yeah I continued there and when it got to I think 13 or 14 then we started actually playing some matches um and we went to some tournaments we went to Germany um and played in like some seven aside tournament against some really good players um and teams obviously like the Borussia Dortmund Hamburg like some really big teams and then we went to the Dallas Cup. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. A lot of teams go over to Dallas and um, uh, play in the Dallas Cup. It's quite a big tournament. Uh, I, and I wasn't that yeah, good. and then after that, I got offered a, a, a YTS, which wow. I don't know how you, I don't know what you caught in Scotland. I don't know if it's the same. Maybe a kind of or something like that. 
Yeah, I think it might be a like a schol- like a scholarship apprenticeship or something like that. And yeah, I, I got offered to, to sign there. So yeah, I was buzzing with that for, for two years, three years still. Was there anyone at the time that you really looked up to in the in say like the first team? Well, when I was when I was young, um, the strikers that was there uh, when I was coming through the youth system, they had like Jermaine Defoe, mm. uh, what's it called, Freddie Canute, Paolo Di Canio. So they had some, yeah, it was pretty hard to try and get into the first team, obviously. But <laughs> also, also there, like the player that I looked up to the most was Joe Cole. Oh. And I know he's not even my position, but it's just the way he was. He was like an unbelievable talent at that age. And yeah, it's someone all the, all the young boys looked up to because that's what we wanted to aspire to. Because obviously he got into the first team when he was like 18, 19. So obviously when you're 16, 17, you look at that and you think, well, I, w- I want to try and like, emulate what he's done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, he was sort of like a sort of unsung hero because like when, when he was playing for the, the bigger teams, for example, like a lot of people like would try and be Ronaldo on the training ground, but no one wanted to be a Joe Cole. Yeah. But he, he was still a very consistent performer at that high level. Yeah, he, he honestly, he was... Like the first couple of years he broke for West Ham is unbelievable. I mean, they, they did have an unbelievable team back then. They had like Rio was playing, Michael Carrick was playing, Lampard. Like they had an unbelievable team. But just the way Joe, like Joe, he wasn't scared. You know, like some kids come into the first team and they're a little bit scared to try things because they don't want to like muck up and then maybe be out of the team. But he was yeah. like, he was not scared at all. He just tried everything and he was brilliant. Like these skills he had and everything. And then obviously he got his move. So he was like probably he was the best player I've seen um, at that time and even when I got to train with him um, with the first team sometimes like the things he'd done you just sit there and like I'll never forget my first time in training you know when you play like piggy in the middle like five against two in the middle oh that's sort of would, El Rondo that's what we call it yeah like Rondo basically yeah. I was in the middle for I, I was fucked before training started because of the Rondo like I was in I didn't go out I was in the middle the whole time. Like they were just taking the piss out of me because I was the young youngster training. And yeah, it was just unbelievable. Like I, I just stayed in the whole time. And like afterwards, you just sit there and you just think, wow, like that's the level I've got to try and get to. That like that's like different level. So you've got like I had a lot of work to do. Yeah, absolutely. Um you, you also attracted some interest from other clubs such as Norwich, Crystal Palace and Arsenal when you were at West Ham. But what was the lure to stay at the club? Well, I did... Uh, Arsenal came in for me a lot. They were always... like They had someone like coming around my house nearly every couple of weeks. Wow. Yeah, it was... Yeah, it was... Um, it was quite... Um, they wanted me a lot. And back then, you don't really know at the time. You, know, you don't really think about anything like that at the time. You just think, oh, Arsenal's interested. But you don't like... How can I say? It's not like you feel like, oh my God, I'm going to be like a superstar. It's not like like stuff like that. You just, because I was at West Ham and I was training and seeing some of these people, like when I went to Arsenal, I didn't think, oh, like, like how can I explain? I didn't look at these people any differently than I looked at the likes of Joe Cole and Lampard and stuff like that, if you understand what I mean. But yeah, they, they called me and um, I never forget, they, they took me to the training ground and they let me watch training and they didn't like say anything that yeah they, they let me watch training and I saw the likes of um who, who did, I think I saw like Vieira um like all these kind of Emmanuel yeah, Petit yeah. Perez like all these big players uh-huh. and they were just sitting there and like I was just was just looking thinking like this is like a mate like I can't believe I'm here do you know what I mean but then at the same time, I was also thinking, oh, but then West Ham have got, like I just said previously, like Lamp- Lampard, Joe Cole and all that. Yeah. Like, so I didn't really look at it any differently, but they offered me a deal there and then to sign. And my dad was like, look, son, what do you want to do? And because I had been at West Ham for like a few years, I just felt like I'm comfortable um, yeah. I know everyone at West Ham. I don't really want to change academies and all this stuff. And, you know, in hindsight, it might have been a wrong decision because 
Arsenal did give a lot of youngsters chances in them Worthington Cups back in the day. Like a lot of youngsters played in them cup competitions, whereas West Ham sort of played their first team. Yeah, because so yeah, I do I do all, always think what it could have been, but yeah, I, I just chose to start West Ham. I, I I find it quite peculiar in my in my research because you often see quite a lot, like especially up here, you see like youngsters. Break through the first team at like St. Yes, Johnson, Motherwell, uh, even St. Mirren at times. And as soon as there's one click of interest from the old firm, they jump shit. Yeah. And then they struggle to break into the first team there and they're farmed out on loan. And then there's a whole media circus about why he should have just stayed at the club that he was originally at. But you, you decided to just stick with your guns and just stay at what was comfortable for yourself. Yeah, it it was, and West Ham was like a family club back then. Like they did everything, like to try and help the youngsters. I mean, they give us everything. It was just, it was. I I can never say a bad word about it, to be honest, because it was an unbelievable experience. And I was there, like when I, since I was eight, and I left when I was nineteen. So it's a long time, you know. Yeah. But I did have opportunities to leave. I had opportunities to leave loads of times to Arsenal, um, Chelsea, Norwich, Leeds, Palace. There was loads of teams. But I just felt that we had a really good academy system. And I also always looked at a little part of me also thought, albeit that Arsenal always give youngsters a chance to play in the, um, like the cup competitions and West Ham didn't, a lot of youngsters did actually break through into the West Ham team and got a chance. There was like Glenn Johnson, mm -hmm. like Rio Ferdinand, like Joe Cole, like Lampard, Anton Ferdinand. There, there was a lot like, so the youngsters actually did go on. Whereas the people, the youngsters that got a chance in the cup competitions at Arsenal didn't really go on to do anything. So yeah, I look at that also as well. All right. So, I mean, it was, it was a bit of 50, 50 really. Like yeah. Maybe a hundred percent, a hundred percent, fifty-fifty. But I mean, like I said, in hindsight, you don't know what it could have been if you did choose the other decision. But at the time, I just felt by staying with West Ham, it was the right thing to do for myself and obviously for my family as well. Absolutely fair enough, mate. Uh, so moving on, uh, you left West Ham and then you made the move north of the border and signed for one of my more local clubs, Dunfermline Athletic, uh, at yeah. age 19. Uh, did you have any reservations about the Scottish game before you came up here? No, to be honest, it, it was mad how it worked out because I don't know if you know in England they have a thing called the exit trials. So basically yeah. all the players that get released um, from, the, from the pro academies, they go and they, I think they train for two or three days and then you play a match and loads of scouts come and watch. Right. And on that list, I had um, Dunfermline, Dundee. I had some teams back home in Scotland. I had some teams from Wales and I had some teams from abroad. But I don't know, for some reason, I just got just chose Dunfermline. It, I, don't, I don't even know how it happened. And Jimmy Caldwell, invite, Jimmy Caldwell and Jimmy Nicol invited me up for two or three days training. Yeah. And uh, they put me with a boy. I don't know if you remember the boy called Aaron Lebon. Adam Lafondre? Uh, no, uh, Aaron Labont. He actually played in the cup final for Dunfermline against Celtic and Henrik Larsson played, uh, scored two or three two goals and scored. It might have been before your time. It was, because my first my first proper season as a football fan was 06-07. Oh, oh, it would have been. I think it was the actual, I think it was the 2004 final. We lost 3-1. We actually took the lead, Dunfermline. Skirla scored a header. And then, yeah, they came back and beat yeah. us 3-1. But anyway, yeah, Calderwood invited us up for training. And it's crazy because me and Aaron were staying in a, in a, um, like a bed and breakfast sort of place. They picked us up for training, went to training. And we had stinkers. We was so bad. Honestly, we was doing shooting. I couldn't hit the target. I was, I was shanking everything. And I was just looking at myself thinking, like, Lee's lot think I'm shit. You know, like, but, and then, and then I was looking over and there's Stevie Crawford and Craig Brewster just following him top corner and that. And then there's me just, and I thought, oh my, oh my God. Anyway, so basically I went, after the the week, we went, me and Aaron, we both went into the, the um, Jimmy Caldwell's office and he went to us, can you cook lads? 
And I went, well, I can cook some stuff. Yeah. And he went, have you got a girlfriend? And I says, well, yeah, but not like a little bit, like not on and off, basically. And he went to me, all right, good lad. We're going to offer you a two, both of you a two year deal. And me and Aaron just looked at each other and we were, because we thought he was going to say we're minging, like we're rubbish. But he offered us a two year deal. And yeah, we uh, we ended up coming up, like we had the summer, um, go back home to London and that, see my family, get everything sorted in there. We, we moved up to Scotland. Excellent stuff, excellent stuff. Uh, have have you tried the steak bridies that are on offer at East End Park? Mate, whenever I was not in the, whenever I was not in the squad, that's all we had, steak bridies. They yeah. were unbelievable. Uh, they still are, mate. Like, whenever, whenever it's not COVID, uh, I try my best to go to as many East games at Eastside Park as possible just for the Stevens State Brady. Yeah, Stevens, that's the one. We always used to go. We used to go there after training and get a State Park. Uh, what's it? Uh, State Brady, always. Yeah. Oh, it's, uh, it's still unbelievable, mate. Unbelievable. Uh, but ju- during your time at Dunfermline, you managed to get a few call ups from the Republic of Ireland under 21s. Uh, yeah. What was the most valuable lesson you learned from that experience? Oh, that's a good, <laughs> that's a good very good question, Godzi. Um, well, to be honest, I was shocked to even get the call up. Um, I remember Jimmy Calder would call me in the office and he had a paper with a list of all players that have been called up. And I, I was shocked, to be honest. And I thought to myself, I wish I knew about Republic of Ireland before. Because when I was at West Ham, I could have had a chance to play for the younger, like the youth teams or something. Mm-hmm. But... Um, yeah, like that was an unbelievable experience. I got called up to play against Poland. Um, and that was, it was amazing. Like the lesson I learned for that was just like, you've got to, like, you've got to actually work really hard to get where you want to be because I saw some players there that were unbelievable and you just look at them and you just think like, you, you want to like, not putting yourself down because you, you're obviously good enough to be there because otherwise you wouldn't have been selected. But you just look and you just think to yourself, like, I've, I've got levels to go if I want to try and get, like, higher in my career. So the, the lesson I, I would take from that was, like, yeah, there was a lot of work still to be done because I was training. And, and while I was, I was confident, I was nervous because I didn't want to make any mistakes to, like, I don't know, just not to, like, be out of place. And because, obviously, I'm a Cockney guy and they were Irish. Do you know what I mean? So, <laughs> I didn't know some of the some of the times they're talking so far. She ain't got a clue what they're saying, but um, but it was it it did help because I had no hunt um, who was oh, with yes. me, and um, he did he weren't in the squad. But before I went, he sort of gave me some advice and stuff, and just said like, don't be scared, like they'll look after you, and they and they were really welcoming. And uh, we flew to Poland. Yeah, we played the game. I think I played forty five minutes. I done well. Um, I think we drew one each, I think it was. And then we watched the first team play after. Um, and they had the like, unbelievable players like Robbie Keane and all them sort yeah. of players back then. And um, and then after that, yeah, came back and I got I got another call up, but I couldn't go. Jimmy Calder wouldn't, wouldn't let me go. He wanted me to stay. Yeah, really. I could have been playing against Portugal, but instead I was playing against, against Clyde in the, in the Scottish Cup. I mean, I think you're similar age. Aren't you a similar age to like Ronaldo as well? He's yeah, he's one year. Yeah, well, I think we're in the same. We're born in the same year. Yeah. So, you, or was he in the first team at that point? Like uh, he would have probably been in the first team because yeah. he's playing for Man United no, first team. So I'm just sitting trying to think, trying to work out whether you could have been playing against Ronaldo or Clyde. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. Like I was playing against Clyde. Um, because what had happened, we played against Clyde before and it got snowed off. Like the was snow that the Scottish was Cup game? Yeah, the Scottish Cup. Yeah. The phone, like, and it was, the snow was incredible. And they had to call it off. And, the, and when they replayed it was when I had a call up. So I couldn't go. Aye, because I remember my mate Jamie showed me the highlights of that or something about that game. And the fact that it was so heavy snow and the game just didn't go ahead. Um, yeah, like like, like the snow. Look, we, we we played, I think, until the 60th minute or something, and then that you couldn't see no lines or anything, and then yeah, they just called it off. And we was, I think, we was actually 
two one up or something at the time. But then when we replayed it, obviously we started from zero zero and yeah, we got through. But obviously, why I was happy that like, I was playing in the first team, I was still a part of me was a little bit gutted. I wasn't away like playing against Portugal. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, th- I think it's the same with everyone. <laughs> Portugal yeah. or Broadwoods, <laughs> yeah, exactly. conditions. <laughs> mm, I don't know. Exactly. So yeah, it was, it was uh, obviously a bit gutting, but at the same time, I understood why Jimmy Porter would have obviously had had uh, to keep me there. Yeah. Uh, were there any household names that you played with uh, in the under twenty ones? Uh, there was. Let me try and think. There was Stephen Elliott. Oh, yeah. Stevie Elliott. He, I think he went to play for Hearts. There was the boy at Hull, left back at Hull. Um, what's his name? I can't remember. Is it? I've got all their names on a shirt. There was a boy called Sean Fulton, Daryl Murphy. Oh, I know Daryl uh, Murphy. He played. He ended up went, going to Ipswich and he was at Celtic at one point as well. Yeah, he was there, Darrell Murphy. There, honestly, there's a I can't remember all their names to be honest, but the ones that I know that went on to have really good careers were them three and um the goalkeeper, but I can't remember what his name was. I think Wayne Henderson is his name. Right. I don't know if you'll know. I don't know if you'll know him. But yeah, it was unbelievable to be honest. I only went a couple of times, so I can't really remember what their names, to be honest. You got a goal as well, didn't you? No, I, I got a goal, but it got disallowed. Oh. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Because <laughs> it said on Wikipedia he made six appearances and scored once. Oh, well, I don't know about that. Someone's obviously chatting shit. <laughs> <laughs> fair game. Uh, I, could, so... I could just lie, but that's not me. <laughs> fair, fair play, mate. Uh, then you moved to St Mirren, and, I mean, you scored goals for fun, and you gave me nightmares as a seven- and eight-year-old child. Like, whenever you played against Mother, we pretty much scored. Yeah, I always tell you that. You know that, God's <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, but that St Mirren was... To be honest, when I first signed for St Mirren, it wasn't as easy as people thought because I went there and my second day training, I caught the mumps. Oh. And my... Yeah, honestly, my face looked like a character from Bo Selector. It went massive. Like, you should have seen me. Because <laughs> uh, what had happened, I was living with Aaron at the time. We was living in Dalgetty Bay in Dunfermline and he got mumps. And then fucking two days later, I got mumps. And we were both sitting in the house with these massive faces just looking at each other thinking, fucking hell, what are we doing here? Like, but yeah, Gus McPherson was brilliant with me. Like he um, obviously gave me time off and stuff. And then when I came back, it was really hard to get in the team because we had John Sutton and Stuart Keane who were scoring goals for fun in the first division. And... It's, it's weird how it happened. Like, I, I couldn't score. I couldn't... I, for some reason, you, I, I don't know if you've ever played gog, uh, football gogs and you go through them stages where you just can't hit the net. Like, everything yeah. just... And mm-hmm. the last game, the second from last game of the season, I scored the winning goal to get us promoted. It's mad how it... it, it and, then the, and then the following week, we played away at Stramra and I scored again. And then the season ended and I was gutted. Because it was like I just started scoring, it was all finished. But yeah, St. Miriam was amazing. <clears throat> it's like w- one time when I played when I played for Glenrothes Colts, uh, I got my first start in ages. I couldn't remember when the last time I'd actually started a game. And the coach said to me, right, whoever gets the first goal today, uh, g- I'll I'll give you a fiver. So I, I score within five minutes and we'll go one 0 up. Uh, it was a great through ball and I finessed it into the top corner and I think we I think we lost three two I scored twice and then I got dropped the next game and we lost five nil and there was this like what can I do to yeah. and managers I, are like that sometimes though you do uh, well and then they leave you out and it's sometimes they do it to see your reaction to see what kind of character you are because it's happened to me many times but You've just got to accept it, you know. If yeah. you're never gonna, you're never gonna win against the manager. You know what I mean? No, I know. Uh, wh- whatever the manager says goes. Exactly. Sometimes you don't agree with it, of course, and you might mumble stuff under your breath because I'm sure everyone does. But you just got to get on with it and try and prove him wrong. Absolutely, mate. absolutely. But I mean, I think I was I was 16 at that time, 
so yeah, I didn't really have the professional edge to sort of get through it, but <laughs> we learned. <laughs> <we learn. laughs> I mean, that, that was only boys' club, so I mean, I was never going to get uh, to the professional level anyway. But uh, I mean, I still like to think. Well, football's football at any level. If you're playing, if you're not playing, you're still angry. It doesn't matter what level oh, yeah. you're playing at. Absolutely, mate. Absolutely. Uh, so, of course, when you played for St Mirren, you certainly loved the goal in the cup. I mean, you scored that goal in the cup replay against us. Uh, you scored a penalty against Celtic. I mean, you scored at Fur Park again with a goal against Hearts in the cup semi final. You bagged five goals in one game against East Stirling. I mean, that was. You must have loved cup football. Yeah, I, I don't know. That year. Everything just seemed to drop for me in the cup. I was just, yeah, it was. I was just scoring goals. It all started at East Sterling. I scored five goals um, in the first, in the first or second round. I can't remember what it was. Yeah, but it means and then from there it just, mm-hmm. yeah, and then from there it just like every, every round I, I sort of kept scoring. And it, we come to the semi final, and that that time in the semi final we had a lot of problems going on. I don't know if you know about that, Gogs, but we had a lot of problems going on with our bonus oh, and right. stuff. Yeah, there was some big problems going on. Um, I probably shouldn't, shouldn't say it all on here, but That's there was it. problems. There's no pressure. And um, so basically, yeah, we played that game. And it's just one of them games, you know, when you just like you. It's like what, because the we was having problems, we just wanted to put a performance on and win just to shut up the people that were making the problems, basically. Mm-hmm. So because I, I think... To be honest with you, I think a lot of people thought he was going to lose because Hart's team were, were right good back then. Oh, they, they were um, sensational. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They had a right good team. And when I scored, I think I scored in the 50, like it was just after half time or something. So we had a lot, lot, long time to hold on. But yeah, we got through and I, like I scored. But in the final, absolutely gutting. Worst final I've ever been involved in. I think about it every day. The 1 0 against Rangers. Yeah, and we had and they had two men sent off. Oh, gotten for you. Like, like we should have been one nil up in the first half. We absolutely battered them in the first half. They, we had one cleared off the line. Um, David Barron, I don't know if you remember him, one of our yeah, left backs. Yeah, I remember David Barron. Yeah, I, he, I, he had a shot from about forty yards at the crossbar. I, re- I remember and, being a funny start with David Barron uh, because like it was when St. Martin played. When you played them Barton in a in a cup match, it might be a game that you scored in, and the commentator said that David ba- David Barton wasn't even alive last time the Barton did something in a cup. Yeah, yeah he, he probably wouldn't because he was really young when I was there. Yeah, it was like eight or nineteen coming through. He, but I mean, that final he played brilliant, and like I said, to lose one nil like the way we did, Kenny Miller scoring in like the last five minutes, it was that was hard to take, but. It's I know weird. all about Kenny Miller or last minute goals. If 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 you know anything about that vi- video that went viral of me, I know all about Kenny Miller last minute it's, goals. R- Rangers used to do it. Rangers and Celtic used to do it all the time against oh, us. We still could, do it. Still we, do. It. We, we could play brilliantly and then they just get that last. But you know, it's fu- it's a it's funny because we was gutted. Like I'm talking devastated after that. Like. I've never cried on a football pitch before. And I don't know if you've seen the video. Like, I was crying and some Morton fans, like, started making, like, taking the piss and all that. Oh, Billy the baby and all this shit. But you can't help it because mm. you just, your emotions, it just comes out. You can't help it. Right. And I remember seeing Andy Millen. Like, he was one of the best coaches I've ever worked for. He's in the dressing room and he just had his head, because he had got loads of drinks for us and stuff in case we had won. Mm-hmm. And he's just sitting there gutted and you could just... You just look and you just feel so disappointed for these people that have worked so hard as well behind the scenes that no one sees. Yeah. And and it, and, it, and it really, really did hurt. But it's weird because three or four days later, we played Celtic and we beat them 4-0. I remember that game. And their, man, their manager at the time got the sack after that game, Tony uh, Mowbray. Mowbray. So it's, it's crazy how football works. It's, it's, it's very crazy. I but so, sometimes you see that though if teams are so hard done by after a final they go out and just absolutely pump whoever they play next no matter who it is. Yeah, well, we I've been involved in two games like that. That one where we lost the final and everyone was absolutely devastated and 
we shed a lot of tears. Like that was horrible because to 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 lose the way we did. I mean, if we got pumped five 0 it probably would have been better. Oh yeah. Do you know what I mean? But the fact that we lost one nil when they had two men sent off, it hurt. But the other time was when we played Celtic at um, Celtic Park and we lost seven nil. Yes. We lost seven nil, and they smashed us. And then we played them a week later in the cup and we beat them one nil. Mm-hmm. So it's just mad. Football's a mad. You can't like predict nothing. Oh, absolutely not. I mean, you see that all the time. Like it's it's very rare. That, like if you've got a get if if you've got the same opponent twice in a row, it's very rare that one team will win both games. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Absolutely, Gogsy. Hundred percent. I agree with you. Mm-hmm. Uh, so of course, um, after you played for St Mirren, I mean, plenty of memories there. Uh, leaving as a sort of a cult hero, I do believe. Um, you left St Mirren in 2010 and signed for Turkish side Gençler Bilici. Is that is that how you say it? Gençler Bilici. Gençler Bilici. Ah, right, okay. Uh, how do you feel about this move in hindsight, uh, given that you had to basically get your contract uh, terminated later on because of the club's financial trouble? Yeah. To be honest, at the time, I was it it was it was either I was going to go because I was I was cl- very close to signing for Hearts. Right. I had a meeting with Jim Jeffries and everything. Like uh, my my brother, like my brother's my agent. He was up here and he was he was sorting everything out for me. And then we got a, like we got a call from for like Genshner Billy had been at the semi final match against Hearts, where I scored and we, and I didn't know which I'm actually happy I didn't know because I don't really like to know when t- clubs are watching. And yeah, they, like they got in touch and obviously my dad's of Turkish Cypriot descent, you know, so it, would, it was a dream for him to have his son play. And I, like, I, I was absolutely buzzing because that was like a massive step up for me to go and play over there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I got the opportunity like I, like, uh, to play like Galatasaray, Besiktas, Fenerbahce, like all these teams. So I would never have got that chance. But some people don't realise what actually goes on for a footballer when they move abroad. Like there's some, some bad stuff you have to go through. And, it, and it's not nice, to be honest. A lot of stuff that can happen is not nice. Um, and yeah, like they had some problems, problems that I've never seen in Scotland before because it's just a completely different culture. Yes. Um, and when I was there, they, the, the manager got sacked. Like we had a, a German manager, Thomas Stoll. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. He, he played in the World Cup for Germany and everything. And right. he, he managed Hamburg before Borussia Dortmund. And he was my manager there. And he got sacked. Something had happened. But he was still coming to training, just like sitting around and all that. Because apparently, if he went, they wouldn't have paid him. So he was waiting to get his payoff. And you're sitting there and you're thinking, like, this is madness. Like, me, like I was there with Michael Stewart. Me and Michael Stewart were there. We played in the same team. We both signed at the same time. And me and Michael Stewart were like, what is, what is all this about? Like, this is mental. Um, and then yeah, Michael Stewart had problems and he left. And I carried on staying until like the half the half halfway bit, like the December break. Yeah. And then yeah, I, I um I went home for Christmas and then I got a call saying uh they're gonna terminate my contract. And I was like, Well, couldn't you have said anything to me when I was there? Couldn't you have like been like professional and told me to my face? Um, because I had still like my stuff in an apartment yeah. in Turkey. So obviously I thought I'm coming home from to see my family for Christmas and all this stuff. And yeah, I get this, get this call and it's, it just changes it. Like you can't enjoy, how can you enjoy your Christmas when you get a call like that? No, Do you know no, what I mean? That's awful, mate. That's, yeah, it, it, no. that's the things that people don't realise. It, 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 it's, it's a horrible thing. And like my new year and my, like, cause my birthday is the 3rd of January as well. So every, everything in that week was rubbish. Um, and then I got, um, when I went back to Turkey, I was getting calls from like loads of other Turkish clubs. Mm -hmm. Um, and I ended up going to another team in the first division. I could have stayed in the super league, but I went to a team in the first division because they were fighting for promotion to get back in the super league. Mm -hmm. 
Um, was there, and was there team, not a thing in your contract that you couldn't sign for another team in the Super League? Yeah, yeah, I, I couldn't sign for another. That's what I'm saying. Teams were coming up, but I couldn't sign for them. But the opportunity come of the team called Samson Sport, which were fighting to get back into the Super yeah. League. So I just thought that's a no-brainer. So, yeah, I went there, um, done all right. But again, the same things as the, as the, as Genshin Ebony, like, I really, I really probably shouldn't say this, but I'll tell you anyway, I remember when I was playing over there and um, basically we needed a point and they needed, uh, the team was playing against, we needed a point to get promotion and the team was playing against needed a point to get into the, like the playoffs. Right. To get, yeah. and, and before the game, I'm sitting there like thinking about, we're going to win today and I hope we do all this, blah, blah, blah. And I can see, like, their captains from their teams come in to speak to our captain. And I'm thinking, that's a bit dodgy. That's, that doesn't normally happen before a game. But apparently, I don't know if it's just true 100%, so I don't want to, like, say that. But apparently, they just said, let's play a draw. Let's play a draw. Like, we'll just keep that. We'll, we'll, we'll keep it a, a one each or two each. Yeah. And I'm sitting there, and I'm just thinking to myself, Gogsy, like, this is madness. Like I've not been involved in stuff like this. This is a whole different thing for me. And like I said, I don't know if it's 100% true or not, but it's just mad that the game finished one each. And wow. Yeah, and and even there was there was another game I played. We played in a, in a city called Diabaka, which is pretty rough city. Right. Okay. And um, we was winning five zero, and their fans started chucking rocks at us, stones at us. And our coach called us, called us and said, stop scoring goals. Stop scoring. We had to play, we had to play for like 30 minutes uh, not to score a goal. That, that would so, annoy me. Like, because, of course. Cause, you get, you're going through one-on-one -on -one and you've got a miss. Do you know what I mean? And you look like, yeah. like people don't know, but you, like, you look like an idiot, but it's yeah, got to be done because like, they don't want trouble. As, as we're both strikers, like, it's in your nature to go and find a target. And to be, to be told, basically, you've got to miss your next chance. That's absolutely mental. I remember, I remember the striker I was playing with, um, a Nigerian guy, and I'm sure, he, I'm sure he just shot from anywhere and he hit the crossbar, but he didn't mean to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he didn't mean to, and I think everyone was raging at him, saying, like, relax, calm down. And he said to me, he was like, Billy, I didn't even mean that. <laughs> so yeah, it's 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 just mad what you don't see. That's right? like it's like when you're sitting playing on FIFA and you're on like semi-pro just to try and get some achievements in, and you're like five 0 up and you're bored that you're nuts. So you just sit, yeah. you just put the controller down for ten minutes just until the game's played out. That, that's what I'm saying. The things you don't see. Um, it was tough. There was some rules that I've never seen as well, like. For example, if you sit at the table and uh, like, because we all sit together and eat our dinners together and stuff like this. So basically you, you have to wait for the captain to say, all right, you can go. So you could be sitting at the table, you could have finished your dinner, you, you finished a coffee, whatever it may be. And maybe you've got something to do. Maybe you've got somewhere to be, but you've got to wait for the captain to finish his food. And he will say to you like a, a word and then you can go. So we're waiting for sometimes and we're looking at the captain and he's just like taking the pit, like just like, you know, just, just, like just, eating just watching him. And, and you're just thinking like unbelievable, like, all right, you're our captain. You're not a king, you're a captain. You know what I mean? Like we respect you and everything. But anyway, after time, he started being a little bit more lenient with the uh, foreigners and he would just be like, you can go and stuff. But yeah, it was hard to get used to. Mm. Did you play with did you play with anyone that was like quite well known in Turkey? Or uh in Turkey, in the same team as me. Uh in the same team, who would you know? Do you know Mile Jedanak? Uh, oh yeah, he played for Australia. We yeah, and, and Crystal Palace and yeah. uh and Aston yeah, he, yeah, I played with him. Yeah. Um, but played against, yeah, I played against some unbelievable oh, yeah. players over there. You'd have like, played against the likes of Hammer Alton Top, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, look, I played the, the the ones I remember from the top of my head. The ones that stick out mm. were uh, Guti. Oh, like, he played was, at Real Madrid. Yeah, eh? he was. 
Yeah. Yeah, he was at Real Madrid. He was unbelievable. Um, Charisma. Oh, yeah. Uh, Harry Kuehl was over there for Galatasaray. Lucas Neal. Uh, what's it? Arda. You know Arda Turan? Oh, yeah. Arda Turan. Yeah. Yeah. He's back at Galatasaray now, but this was before he moved to Spain. Um, and their manager was Haji, Georgi Haji was oh, their manager. Of course. So yeah, they, they Galatasaray was was a very good team, and some of the players, uh, Servet, the big defender. Like there's there's a lot of players that probably you wouldn't know that play in the Turkish national team and stuff, but yeah. some of them were yeah incredible. Like Bobo, he played as a striker for for Besiktas. Yeah, Brazilian boy. Yeah, like just un- unbelievable players, like. And I remember when I played against Besiktas, I was, uh, I think I was on the bench and I came on. I think I came on at half time or in the second half sometime. And they, he told me that I've got a Mark Charisma, uh, Mark uh, Gooty. So, yeah, it's mad. Like I, would, I was thinking Gooty's going to take corners and everything, but Gooty was, it ended up being in the box and they had someone else taking it. And uh, yeah, I was, I was just, you know, when you're just standing next to someone, you think, yeah, you played for Real Madrid, you play, and now I'm, I'm marking you. Like it's just, yeah, surreal. It's, it's, it's a bit surreal. Yeah, it is. It's it's because he, he had played with like unbelievable players. He had played with Beckham, Ronaldo, Figo, Zidane. Do you know what I mean? Like, and and I'm sitting there like looking at him, just thinking. Pff. But I had to keep my concentration because if he scored, I'd have got battered. Ah, exactly. Like, especially in Turkey. I mean, I, I don't exactly. know. I don't want to know what the forfeits would be if you did something <laughs> wrong in Turkey. <laughs> Mate, just. Oh, it's 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 different. It's so different. You, you can't you can't explain. Don't get me wrong. It's amazing. It's amazing because some of the things you, you get to, to to do and to experience. But also there is a side that you don't want to see as well. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I mean, uh, mo- moving on now. Um, of course, a lot of players find the lure of Scottish football basically because of the old firm, and you you had sort of the Turkish equivalent playing against Fenerbahce, Galatasaray, Besiktas. But what, what was the atmosphere like going to these places? Galatasaray was amazing. Like Galatasaray was the last... We played them in the last time they played in their old stadium. Oh, that would have been huge. Yeah, so it was huge. Like, so if you actually look, there's some... If you look on YouTube and you'll see some videos of the last match, they were ripping out seats. They were chucking the seats on the pitch. Like, it was meant... Because they was losing... Because we beat them 2-0. Like, yeah, if they was winning, it probably would have been different. But they was all ripping oh, yeah. seats at. And obviously, they were probably taking them home and stuff as memorabilia. And But some of the seats got ch- got chucked at us as players. Uh, they attacked our bus after the game as well. Um, yeah, it was madness. But like I said, it was a, it was an, a great experience. But they're, they're like... It's, it's, it's so different to, to watching a game in Scotland. They are like, don't get me wrong, Scottish, like Rangers, so any, any Scottish team, it's Hibs, St Mirren, Motherwell, we're all like really passionate, but they're like, it's like, it's like life or death for them. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's completely yeah. different. Hmm. I can imagine. Because I, I have seen some some footage, but like, I, I just think the Turks just take it to a whole new level. They, have you have you seen the video of there's a guy who's watching Turkey? I think it's the Turkey national team, and his wife's got the controller, and she keeps turning the telly on and off. But he thinks there's a problem with the telly, and he ends up smashing the telly because he's going like, all like this and stuff. I think and I he ends have, up. Smash- I think I have as well. Ah, uh, <laughs> they're they're a bit different. It's unbelievable, and especially when Galatasaray played Fenerbahce. Wow. That is, mm, it's it's different. Like, I'm just glad Scotland have only ever played one international fixture against the Turkish national team. And that was in the 60s, so it was a while ago. But Sunis done something when he was the yeah, manager, Sunes I believe. Ran, ran to the centre of the park at Fenerbahce and just wedged in a flag. Yeah, like, <laughs> like see, see, he would be, always be a legend for the, uh, uh, to the Galatasaray fans. But if he goes back, the Fenerbahce fans, yeah, they'll be after him. I asked his card March for the rest of his life. <laughs> uh, so when you left Turkey to sign for A League side Perth Glory, 
Was your ambition like always to hop around the world to go to as many countries as possible? <laughs> no, not, not really. I always wanted to try and get back home, but just these opportunities kept You're coming. You're getting further and further away. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? It's weird because I was, when I came, when I left uh, the second Turkish club, mm. I was in touch with St Mirren to go back to St Mirren. Right. Yeah, but then uh, I played with a striker called Shane Smeltz. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. He, he yeah. played for New Zealand. He scored in the World Cup against. Oh Italy. yeah, I have now. Yeah. So basically, I played. I played with him against their Billy in the Turkish side, and he went to Australia. Um. So basically, I went to a team called Wellington Phoenix. Yes. Okay. okay. And I had just travelled for about thirty hours. And I was honestly gogsy. I was, I felt so drunk. Obviously, I hadn't touched a drink, but I felt smashed. I couldn't walk or anything. And I, I think I got there at like maybe 12 o'clock at night. But obviously, my body system was all over the shop. And I had to be up at nine o'clock training, right? And I went to training that day. And I, I, like, I sat myself like, it's impossible to put in a, a good performance. Like, obviously you can still play and everything, but you're just drained. Like I was drained and I didn't give a good performance. And I heard their manager at the time was saying some bad stuff about me. I could hear him talking bad as if like he's shit, basically. Um, like he's no good. And then we played a practice match against Brisbane Raw. Yeah. And I'd done what I would normally do. But obviously I was just, I wasn't as, because I don't know if you remember me at St Mirren, like I know I'm a big guy, but I can still run the channels. I run I, quite a lot. I mean, you, you, you single-handedly kept St Mirren up by running the channels. But, <laughs> but at this time, I, I wasn't really doing that much running because I was a little bit tired from the, the obviously the travelling I'd been doing. And apparently, um, yeah, like, they didn't offer me a contract. Mm -hmm. And when I left, they'd done a team meeting the next day. And basically the ma like the manager said to the rest of the players, like, I know we lost yesterday, but we weren't playing with a striker. So, because I, like talking behind my back, because I had left, like he didn't want to offer me a contract. Yeah, that's what he said about me. But Ian Ferguson called me and he was the manager of Perth Glory at the time. Right. And he said to me, Bill, we're looking to sign another striker. Smeltzy smelt, uh, uh, spoke really highly about you. Would you be willing to come over and just have, have a look? And I went over there and uh, Liam Miller was there. Stephen McGarry was there. Like oh, yes. People that I knew. And it was just like, I just felt brilliant straight away, you know, because I knew these players knew what I could do. Mm -hmm. So they obviously have told the coach stuff about me and stuff. So it helped me. And I, and I went there and yeah, it was, it's just funny how it worked out because I signed for them a two-year deal and we played Wellington Phoenix in the quarterfinal and I scored a guy and knocked him out and I ran straight past their manager and was giving it that right in his face. And he, kept, But to be fair, to be honest, like, I know I say bad, but he did come up to me after the game and he says I made a wrong decision and he, he shook my hand. So I, I admire him for, for doing that, but I didn't like what he said behind my back. No, I know. There's nothing worse than hearing people about you behind behind your back. Oh, especially there's no need for it. Like there's no need for it. He should he should if you're a manager, for example, if I become a manager one day and a player has traveled 30 hours, I would think in my head, I would understand right, he's obviously not up to scratch yet. He needs maybe a little bit more time to try and get back like, to his potential or whatever because he's tired. But it's normal. I mean you see players is... that you see players that sign for teams bloody in Premier League, they don't get going for after two, three oh. months, maybe longer. I mean a good man manager would have just said to you, look, you should just take another day rest and exactly. before, before you get going. Because I mean to to travel for all that way, it, it's it's like it's like in the film Goal when Santiago Munez gets gets put on that awful pitch in the, yeah. the off in the completely terrible conditions and he feels his trial because he's not used to that sort of atmosphere. Exactly. Like, I, that's what I'm trying to say. And it's just, and that, but that, that game we played them in the semi final, or the quarter final, sorry, I just gave everything because I really wanted to knock them out. Like, 
And even if some of their players were saying like we should have signed you, we made a mistake in all this. But I didn't care. I, I was at Perth Glory bad. now and I was happy. And when I scored, like I'm not joking, Rob Z. Like I don't know if you if you ever if you if you watch the highlights, right? You can see me. I have made I, I actually run past my bench to go past to their bench and I just look directly at their bench and go, yes, like this. Because I just wanted to, it weren't like it weren't like I, I um, was bitter. It weren't nothing about bitterness no, or anything. It's, it, it's just a pure man mission to just get a bit of revenge. That's yeah, and it's just, and because, uh, it's, it's, uh, like, if he never said anything, I would never have done that. But the fact he said that behind my back, that's why I wanted to do it. it it's, so, it's, okay, it maybe a different case, but, for example, when John Sutton was at Hearts, uh, he, he had a bit of a, argument with Paolo Sergio when when he was at Hearts and yeah. he was then put to put out to the Mariners in the A League yeah. on loan. Yeah, I played against him in the Mariners. Yeah. And and uh, then he came back because he was told that there, there was no place for him in the team. And this was on the back of him scoring two goals in a game. So then he re-signs for Motherwell and basically every time he played against Hearts, he scored. Even when he played and for that, St. Johnson, it, it, he scored against It does up. happen. It does happen because there's always a part of you inside that just there's always them teams you want to do well against because of what how they've treated you. Like, for example, if I played against St. Mirren for another team, I wouldn't have that hatred in my system because they treated me well and they didn't. Yeah, exactly. They weren't bad to me. So, but there's some teams that you do feel like that. And Obviously, Sutz has probably had it, yeah, at, at heart. So I, I remember he did get treated quite bad, and it yeah. and it was wrong because Sutz is top player, man. Oh, he's one of the he's one of the nicest guys I've ever met. Yeah, the nicest guy, honestly, off the pitch, he is the nicest guy you'll ever meet. Mm. He's so nice, and on the pitch, yeah, he, oh, the amount of goals he scored at St Mirren when I was there was incredible. And obviously, he'd done the same at Motherwell as well. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, he was definitely one of my heroes when, when I was growing up, watching him play at Motherwell. Uh, the- how did you think, how did, here's a question for you, Gogsy, how did you think he was similar? Because another striker I played with at St. Mary and went on to Motherwell was Hickman. Yeah. Yeah. What do, you think the, what do you think the difference is between them two and who did you prefer? I thought Higgy was better with his hold-up play. And yeah. John was a wasn't too much quicker, but I thought John was a wee bit quicker than Higgy was. But the thing is... I, I think, I think like, Higgy... I played with both of them, and what I would say is that Higgy was more of a link-up. Mm-hmm. Like, he, he was the one... He would, come, he would come short. He could still score goals, but he would link up. But Sutz, you put anything in the box, Sutz is there. Like, he knows where the ball is going to be. But I, I always thought that with Higgy as well, though, because... I feel like it doesn't matter where you are. If you ping the ball at Higgy, he'll do anything to put the ball in the back of the net. Like mm. That season when he scored 26 goals in the league for us. That is incredible, huh? Like, incredible. What a club the size of Motherwell as well. That was that broke the post-war record for a non-old firm player. I, I honestly thought after he'd done that, he was going to get a move to one of the old firms, you know. It wouldn't have surprised me. But then he was they ended up signing for NEC Nijmegen uh, in Holland. It was just completely bizarre. Yeah, he w- he went there, and then after that, he didn't seem to be the same player again. That's what I'm saying. Sometimes moving abroad, it, it can it can yeah. make you or break you. Really, it's not as easy as what you think it's going to be. No, you're spot on because like it's thing is it's, it's more than just the the sort of oh it's this player moving abroad. It's the logistics behind it. It's like the family as well. The family has to move. Mm. If you've got a family, uh, you've got basically your whole life in your home country has been put on hold. And then you've got to go off to this completely d- different place and a completely different lifestyle. Yeah. It is, it's, it, is, it is really, really difficult. And I remember speaking to Higgy when he was over at, at Nijmegen and I was wishing him good luck and all that stuff. And like even over there, he was scoring. He was doing well. But then, yeah, I don't know what happened after that. It just went, just went downhill, and you just didn't hear about him. I think he washed up at Sheffield United. Yeah, I'm sure it was saying that. And then after that, it's just sort of it's just madness. Mm-hmm. 
because he was at Bangor City as well. He was asked to come out of retirement for that, and then he pretty much stopped, which is a shame. No, he was he was a, he was a he was a good lad, man. Mm-hmm. To be honest, I have played with quite a lot of players that have played for Motherwell as well. You know, yeah. Simon Lapping, another one. Yeah, uh, he scored. Stephen he McGarry, scored a at Celtic Park. Stephen for... the best. Pardon. Lapin scored for us at Celtic Park. We beat him one 0 Yeah, I remember that. But the char- the best character is McGarry. What a guy! Aye. Oh Thanks, my man. God, he is. And I, honestly, when I went to Perth, me and him were in the Fat Club. We had to lose kilos, so we had to stay behind training, and like we would, we had to like do extra training and stuff because Ian Ferguson, obviously, he was Scottish as well. Yeah. He uh, he made us stay behind and say we got to lose some kilos and all that. So me and McGarry were always behind in the fat club. But then when we got out of the fat club, the people that were in the fat club, we would like go and watch him and eat cakes and stuff and just watch him train. <laughs> I'll I'll tell you one funny story. Right? My uncle Mark is or was the Motherwell team doctor for fifteen years, so obviously he knows Stephen McGarry uh, from when McGarry was at Motherwell. And uh, obviously, Steve McGarry left the club because of Jim Gannon when he was at Motherwell. Yeah. Because uh, there was a whole disagreement. I, I'm not completely clued up in the situation because I was I was about hey high when it happened. But uh, when Jim Gannon was sacked by the club, uh, my, my uncle Mark got a text from from uh, Steve McGarry saying, oh, it's great to see that the bad man's gone now. <laughs> <laughs> no, McG- McGarry is a great character, man. Because I, I heard about McGarry from Hugh Murray, because Hugh Murray was really good friends with him. Yeah. Um, and I think John Potter was good mates with him as well, Potts. So I, can, I, can, I heard of, McGarry played for St. Martin, didn't he? Yeah, McGarry I'm was okay. at St. Martin before. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, he was just a mate. He looked after me when I went over to Perth. Like, he took me to uh, for dinner, for coffees and all that stuff, just to try and make me get used to the area and stuff. But what, yeah. what a top, top guy. So how do you feel about the A-League structure? Uh, of course, you can finish as low as sixth place, yet still have a chance of winning the league. <sighs> to be honest, I don't agree with it, but if you finish sixth, I do agree with it. Do you understand? Oh, yeah, of weird course. If it works in it's, your favour, it's one of those ones, eh? Yeah, it's, it's, it's weird. Do you know what? It's weird because when, we, when I was there at Perth, um, we were second bottom at Christmas. We were second bottom at Christmas. And uh, actually, my fat mate, Stephen McGarry, came in, played number 10 and was unbelievable. He scored so many goals, so many assists. And I don't like saying this because uh, it blows his trumpet and I know he'll love it. But if it wasn't for him, we would never have got to the grand final. And I've, I've told him that before. But he came in and he just gave us that injection and he just, I don't know, he just went on a mad one, he was scoring, assisting, it was brilliant. And obviously we had Liam Miller, the late Liam Miller, what a player he was, unbelievable. Mm. And it was just so easy to play with. And we ended up finishing third, I think it was. Yeah, so basically what happens when you finish third, you play the team that finishes sixth at home and then we won. Mm-hmm. And then we played... And then you play one of the top two teams, don't you? Yeah, the, whoever loses, they have a match. For, and then you play that. So we ended up playing the second team away. And we beat them on penalties. Hmm. So then we ended up playing in the final. Um, and to be honest, I've been so unlucky in finals in my career. It's yeah. saying I fucking... I, I, I saw, like, on your Wikipedia, it's like, runner up, runner up, runner up. Yeah, it fucking... It, honestly, it really gets to me because... And it's not like I've been, like, for example, the one at St Mirren when we got to the final and we lost uh, to Rangers, we, sh- we should have won. We didn't get battered. We, we should have won. And this one against Brisbane, um, we was winning 1-0. We got a man sent off. Then they scored in the 85th minute and then they got a, and then they got a penalty in the 95th minute. Oh. And if you see their penalty decision, it is an absolute disgrace. Like one of their players, he's gone down, like he's kicked his own foot. And apparently the ref said that Liam Miller touched him, but Liam Miller never touched him, impossible. And Liam Miller's the most, I don't know if you've ever met him, but he was the most 
honest guy you could ever meet. I've not, I've not, I've not had the pleasure of meeting Liam Miller, unfortunately. Yeah, it, and anyway, so basically I said to Liam, like, did you touch him? And he, Liam went, no, nah, didn't touch him. Like, Liam wouldn't talk shit about stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And yeah, they ended up beating us 2-1, gutted again. Mm-hmm. That's crushing me. Cause like, yeah, of course, it's, it's not to... easy to take. It's, it's soul destroying, right? Because they're two finals that I should have won and I should have had winners' medals, but I've got runners up and no one who cares about runner up medals. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Because like, no one remembers the loser of the final. Of course. I don't, to be honest, I don't even, I know it sounds bad, but I don't even know where the medals are. Really? Yeah, really. I, like, I don't, I think I even give my one from the Scottish Cup away. To a fan, because I I don't know. I just it's it's not something you want to look back on and think runner up. Like you want to be a winner. Yeah, yeah. I, Do you know what I mean? So I, I don't know. I honestly don't but know where they are. Did Did you not partake in the o five o six Challenge Cup? Yeah, we won that. Yeah. We won the Challenge but Cup. But then again, it's, it's, I know it's not the same as. Yes. As, I mean, it's a bit. I've got we, I've got winners medals from when we won the league at Saint Mirren. Yeah. And when we, we won the Bells Cup. Um, and I've got another one from in Turkey as well. But j- just like even my my runner up medal for Perth Glory in that final, I, I honestly can't tell you where they are. Like it's just they don't mean it. I, I know it sounds bad to say because you should always be like grateful for what you achieve in your career. But I mean, if you ask any footballer if they look out for their runner up medal, I don't think you'll see one no, that says yeah. I, I don't think many people would. Nah. Because no I mean, chance. What, what you're wanting to be is the cream of the crop, and of unfortunately, you you've only got say second the second tier promotions, mm. the second tier cup. So that's what I'm saying. It's not it's not the same, man. Yeah. Although obviously, I, I I'm happy with what I've achieved, but yeah. obviously, I'm gutted that I didn't get them to. I mean, at least it's still an honour and still a fond memory to look back on. Of course. Uh, Speaking of an, another runner-up, um, in 2018, you received a call-up uh, by the Northern Cyprus national team. Oh, uh, fuck, no, another runner-up. Yeah, you're right. The Cornerfield World Cup. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, the, the, this, this, is a, this is a thing I find really interesting. Now, the, the, of Obviously, those who are un, unaware of what the Cornerfield World Cup is, it's basically like the non-recognised nations by FIFA, basically all joined together in a massive tournament and play and uh, see who was the best. So Yeah, so basically it's, it's all the countries that are not recognised by FIFA mm-hmm. go into a competition. Um, and it, it's, it's mad how it happened because, like, obviously, if I'm, if, like I said, if I knew about this before, I could have played for Northern Cyprus for year, 10 years, but I didn't even know about it, to be honest. And I only... only um, came here because my dad was born here so he's Turkish like northern Turkish yeah um so yeah I got the call up and um basically it was in London loads of fans loads of Turks there loads of northern like northern Cypriot uh, people and stuff so yeah we played there and we got to the final um and to be honest there was some right good players there you know there was players that have played there was a goalkeeper that was playing um, the goalkeeper we played in the final, he scored. He played for Romania, like someone in Romanian league, maybe Stuart Bucharest or one at Rapid Bucharest or something. There was a defender in the semi-final, and they had a player who had played for Lazio. Oh, so wow. there was some. There was actually some decent players there. Yeah, that, but, that's um, really interesting because I mean, a, a lot of people just look at it and just be like, okay, well that happened. But I, I, I really, I'm really keen on learning a wee bit more about this, because there's a bit of culture in there. Yeah, there is. Honestly, to be honest, the, the, some of the teams in there, like, they're, they're actually decent teams. Like, don't get me wrong, if they play against bloody Scotland or England or anything, no. they'll get beat. Maybe not Scotland, but... <laughs> no, I'm really joking. <laughs> really okay. but, 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 no, but listen, if they play, like, some of them, are, some of them are actually decent, and the players... Like, I played against a defender who was at Lazio in the semi-final, and we had a right good tussle up, because obviously I had experience, he had experience, so it was it was a good battle. Um, yeah, and we beat them 3-2, and then we went into the final, lost on penalties. Absolutely gutted. 
another another final defeat. But you you got a couple of goals in that. Yeah. Scored in the yeah, I scored uh, five. I think I scored five. I think I scored five or four. I think it was four, four and five, five, four goals in five games that you that you played. Yeah, like that. Yeah, something like this. Mm-hmm. Uh, was there? So, so it, it was it was nice. It was a great experience, but just gutted that obviously again runner up. So, I mean, I mean, I, I know you played. You'd already played for Republic Republic of Ireland under twenty ones, but did you get to play for Northern yeah. Cyprus because because you hadn't played for Republic of Ireland at A level? I don't think it would have mattered. Right. Because of the, the because it's not recognised by FIFA. True, true, very true. Do you know, so I, it probably wouldn't have mattered if I did represent them. So, yeah. It, it, do, you, do you know what, it, Bogsy? It's a it's a good tournament to look up on. You're actually, if you look up on it, you might enjoy what you find because mm-hmm. you'll probably be shocked by it. There's some decent stadiums and decent yeah. crowds and stuff like, and obviously some decent players. Because didn't they didn't they use some some of the sort of conference grounds for that tournament? Yeah, well, I played at we played at Sutton United. Sutton United, yeah. Um, so, uh, Old Shelton Athletic, mm-hmm. and I think it was Enfield Town that was the final. It was at Enfield? All right, interesting. So they, there was decent decent little stadiums, but when they they had it two years before in Russia. And apparently the stadiums are incredible over there. I think that was Ak- I didn't go. Yeah, Akbazia. Yeah, that's the one. Was, they had like incredible stadiums. Wow. I mean, that that's just a whole new world. Like, and hardly anyone is actually aware of it. And I'm I'm so fascinated. N- neither it. was I. I didn't have a clue. I didn't have a clue. And you know another thing. I tell you another thing about that tournament quickly. What? Um, it was sponsored by Paddy Power. Right, and he was all that the, the geese like the owner of Paddy Power was always there doing the interviews. And in the final, Mark Clattenberg was the referee. Oh wow! Yeah, Mark Clattenberg was the referee in the final. They bought they bought um, a Premier a Premier League referee for the final. And now he's where is it? He in, is. He, I think he moved to Dubai or something, uh, UAE or something like that. Ah, uh, because he's getting multi million pounds just to referee like United Arab yeah. Emirates games. Yeah, so he's absolutely laughing now, isn't he? Mm-hmm. So after you played your bit in Australia, you're on the move again, and since you've played, you've you've played your trade in Thailand, India, Malaysia, Singapore, Brunei, and of course now Northern Cyprus. Are you glad you've got all your travelling out, out the way since COVID hit? <laughs> of course, I've got a lot of points as well now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but no, it's. To be honest, I would say I didn't really enjoy Thailand and I didn't enjoy India. They're not my kind of places, to be honest. No disrespect to Thais or Indian people. But football for me, I I loved in Malaysia. It was amazing. Like, uh, I've got so many fond memories of my time over there. The fans, like people in England and Scotland don't actually realise how big football is over there. Like, it's massive. Mm -hmm. And in my stadium, we was having 30, 40,000 every week. And it's just different. Like, it was, a, it was a, I can't explain it until you go there. It's just their culture. They're so passionate. It's just, they could, be, to be honest, they could be shouting abuse at you sometimes because it's another language. You ain't got a clue. So, yeah. So you don't mind. No, you don't mind. Like, they could be saying, Billy, you're shit. And I'm going, yeah, yeah, like that. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> You don't, you don't know, but it was just amazing. I loved it there. Um, I scored a lot of goals, enjoyed my time there, and I love Malaysia. And also, I love Singapore as well. So, how would you say that? How how would these teams that you've played for in sort of Asia, how would they do in the Scottish Premiership? Oh, what a question that is. Um, I mean, I've, I know how to gauge teams in Europe because like, I'm, I'm a complete nerd when it comes to like European competition. But in Asia, it's com- like, I have no idea. To be honest, if the, the team I was at in Malaysia, Kedar and Sarawak, they're, I would say like bottom, 
bottom half of the Prem, top half of the first division, oh. sort of like that kind of. So competing with modern, like, modern, yeah, uh, yeah, like they they would. My, my, don't get me wrong. I'm not like mother. I'd probably beat them, but it's not like. Mm. I'm just thinking of if if they played at Kedden Stadium against these teams, mm -hmm. then it's different kettle of fish yeah. because they've got all their fans and everything. Like it's mm. different, but. If you play a one-off match, anything could happen. But I would probably say, like, sort of teams like Hamilton and even, like, St Mirren mm. and Dundee, these kinds of teams, I would say, like this top half of the first, That's bottom half of the... Right. Yeah. Okay. What about uh, that, team, that team from Thailand? Bangkok Glass. Uh, nah. I would say I did I didn't in, to be honest, they probably could be good, but I just you know when you don't enjoy your time and you get treated like shit, I've got nothing good to say about them. Ah right. Like they 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 were like that they were heartless the way they treated me. No. Like I went into training and uh they took like I never had no kit. Um they hid everything, hid my boots. Um they you just treated me like nothing, basically, until I accepted what they was willing to give me for a payoff. And I had signed a two-year deal. So it was horrible. And basically, it was just like, you have to be here at so-and-so time, and you have to go home at so-and-so time. And they had fingerprint things. So you had to fingerprint yourself when you got into the club. So they knew. So basically, if I'm one minute late, they'd find me like, stupid amount of money just because they wanted me to leave do you understand what i'm saying it just got ridiculous it got really messy over there so what what about this team from brunei dar es salaam brunei brunei it, it's a strange one because i was over in in singapore and i was playing for a team called tampanese yeah and i was playing with jermaine pennant you know jermaine pennant oh, obviously yeah. yeah so we was in the same team and we was doing really well i scored i think 20 odd goals or saying and what happened, the team, like they was going through a little financial problem for the next year. They wanted to keep me, but on like lower salary. But there was a team, there was a team in our league called Brunei. They're, they're actually, they're from Brunei, but they travel to Singapore like every second week for a, for a match. Right. And yeah, they offered me a contract. They came in for me. Their manager was Steve King. Oh. So yeah, you know him? He was the Blackburn manager. Now he's actually yeah. working now as assistant at Melbourne Victory. Wow. Yeah, he was the he was the manager of Blackburn in the Premier League. And uh yeah, well, it, it's mad because I went there and um I think it was I think it was one of the second days I was there. Uh obviously they gave me a car to use and I was going to look at houses and for some reason I was on my hat my, my phone and when I reversed I smashed into a wall and I was like, oh my god, this is the <laughs> this is all I need on my second day. So I had to go to Steve Keane and tell him, look, Gaffer, I've crashed the car already, blah, blah, blah. And he was just laughing. And he says, don't worry, we'll get it sorted. So he, he was all right with me. And then what happened? But, but the thing over there is like, Steve Keane is the Gaffer, but he don't really have a say in who signs. Do you understand what I mean? It's like... So is it a sort of director of football that's just sort of... Yeah, well, not director, directors. There's loads of them. Like a whole board? Yeah, it's just it's just ridiculous. So basically, we was I was playing all right. I weren't really playing bad, right. and but I had gone from playing with Jermaine Pennant and like these top players mm -hmm. in my team and scoring twenty goals to going there, and he wanted me to play as like a number ten, and I'm not a number ten. You're not. No, you're not a number ten. Yeah, and I'm thinking to myself like I'll do it, but it's not really it's not <laughs> me, and. Obviously, I wasn't performing. And, and I think even one game I played right wing. I'm sure. And I thought, can you imagine Big Billy running down the wing? Do you know what I mean? That no, makes no, sense. No. You're the guy that is meant to be in the box waiting for the yeah. goal. So um, I went to training one day. And then, yeah, Keno called me and says, Billy, we've got a meeting and all that. And I went, all right. So I went in there. And there's all these, like, Brunei people and me and that. And... Kino didn't talk once. Like all these people talking, and then 
they said, all right, we're going to sign someone else. And I says to them, right, do you know last year I played against you four times. I scored every time I played against you. I said, I scored 20 goals. I was like the second top goal scorer in the league last year. Or I think I might have even been the first. I can't remember. And I says, I've been here for like four months. I said, you're not playing me in my proper position. And I said, not only that, I've played in Asia for like four or five years. I've scored so many goals. And you're judging me on playing out of position in seven or eight matches. And I says, if that's how you're going to treat me, then I would rather not be here. And I looked at Kino and I says, I'm disappointed that you're not sticking up for me here because like you come, you come to meet me when I was playing in Singapore and you tried to get me to sign and like, yeah. I trusted you and all this stuff because I could have went, like I, I could have went to other clubs, obviously, but I went there because I thought he's Scottish. I know the Scottish mentality and all this stuff. And, and he was actually living in the same apartment block as me. Like I moved to an apartment block. It was beautiful. And he wanted to live in the same one as me. So he ended up moving there, which was a oh, bit wow. rubbish because it was like, I was getting like the police watching over me 24 seven. Do you know what I mean? You, so, could, you couldn't bring any any bumps back or anything no, like that. Well, you could, but you had to be sneaky about it. And it was like, you don't want to live a life like that. You know what I mean? You just want to be free. Ah, exactly. And, um, yeah, so basically they said to me, you, you can take this and go, or you can train with the, like, the kids. And I'm sitting there thinking, like, <laughs> eight <laughs> matches, playing out of position, and you're judging me. And... I've not even played that bad. Like the defence had been shocking and was conceding goals for fun. And I've just come from a team that was battering you all last year and I was the top, like the top goal scorer. Like it, I don't, I'm not a big headed person, Gogzi, but... No, you I just was did that to me. Yeah, I was trying to explain these things to them and I was just like, I was just saying to that, Kino, I'm just so disappointed. So I just thought, fuck this. I just got all my training gear, just chucked it, chucked it, got in the car and went home. And I just sat at home and then I waited for like two, three days until they got in touch with me. And then they played a game and they lost 7-1. 7-1. They lost in the league. And I, and I, and I, text, I text Keno at the time and says, fuck me. You've done really well without me. And I says, and it, it just goes to show, it's not my fault why, your team's, why the team's losing, but, you, but I'll get the blame. And then the next week they lost 5-0. And then that's what, after that, I ended up getting my money and just and then just saying I need to. Like, I went back to London and I just needed to take a break. I was just I just wanted to be around my family for like yeah. a month or so. That that's absolutely fair enough. I mean, I I've been playing out in position many a time, uh, but it's, it's just one of these things. Unfortunately, we have we as footballers have to get on with. No, Gogsy, you know if I if I play striker and I played shit and then they said this, I would put my hand up and say, not problem, like. Fair play. Yeah, but, I'll, I'll buck my ideas off. It's fine. Yeah. But to do it when I was playing out of position and like not, like I think it was wrong. Mm. Yeah, I completely agree with that. And and the thing is, that, don't, that stuff don't kind of happen in Scotland or England. Like, you know, you can, players can have bad games, but they still don't get, they don't get their contracts torn up. I, I, I think in Europe, they're a lot more understanding than in than say in Asia because like I would say like yeah, it, yeah but yeah well your Turkey was a little bit no, the same but okay oh well, I'm speaking I'm trying to okay well we'll narrow it down to the UK it's a it's a lot yeah. more understanding in the UK oh UK is a hundred percent different for players they actually albeit they might not give a, like they don't not want to play but they still don't like take the piss. They, they might take the piss a little bit, but not to the extent that these are like, the, the way it happens in other yeah. countries. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just, that, that's just a shame. Uh, I'm, I'm going to ask you a couple more questions here. What would you say is your favourite item of memorabilia you've picked up over your career? Oh, good question. Um, I've got a lot of shirts. I've got a lot of football shirts. Mm-hmm. Where I've swapped with players. Um, I was gutted actually when we played in Australia. I never got Del Piero's because, yeah, Stephen McGarry's got it. Oh my God. All right. Yeah. I'll have to Stephen. get him on and get him to show. Stephen McGarry got it from Sydney match and he signed and Del Piero signed it for him. Um, but whose shirt have I got? From Rangers, I think I've got 
Who did I get from Rangers? I think I've got Chris Boyd's, Kenny Miller, Boom Song. I got Boom Song shirt. Oh, well, on Boom Song. We, yeah, got we, his, we uh, played against him actually when he played for Panathinaikos in the Champions League. Mother will play, play against Panathinaikos. Really? How was he? Uh, he was a bit slow, but he, he, he could tell he still had the ability. Like, He's nice. Still I'm trying to think. Who, who's did I? Oh, I got a uh, in Celtic. I think I got Janino's from when I'm at, from what? Yeah, from ages ago when I was at Dunfermline. Uh, Venegor Hesseling, Aidan McGeady. There's honestly, I've got a whole. There's, I've got so many shirts. I can't even remember all their names. But see, see one thing. I say, see one I thing. I always wondered. One thing I always yeah. wondered was how. How much money did it cost to get Vanagur of Hesselink printed onto that shirt? Yeah, I know it's ridiculous the amount of letters. You would think he would just have like Van Hesselink or, yeah. like, or Hesselink, just like saying short. Yeah, or Jan. But, <laughs> but I, do you know what? I would probably say, I would probably say the thing, the thing that means most to me. Um, I'd probably say my um, cup final. I know, it, obviously, I know we lost, but I would probably say my cup final shirt for St Mirren. Okay. Just because, albeit we lost, it was the first time St Mirren had been to a final in years, and I had scored the goals to get us there. And secondly, it the it was the season I left St Mirren, so it was like something that I'll net like I'll hold on to and I still have a thing that to this day. I haven't put it in a wash or anything. It's still got marks on it from the game. To be fair, I never watch I never wash my match day scarf. That, that's what I'm saying. There's all that, like it's just the superstition. I don't want to yeah take away anything from that game. No, you're absolutely right to like like if if that was me I'd have probably framed it. I think I do. You know, I think it actually is framed, but it's got the mud, like the, on the strip. Well, yeah, that, that's perfect. I mean, the mud means more. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So it's it's nice to have them. It's nice to have them little uh, memories that when you can look back on. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if there was any footballer you could self isolate with, who would it be? Any footballer I could self isolate with? What in the world? In the world, it could be anyone. But Not players I've played with or anything. No, just doesn't anyone. have to be. Any, doesn't have to be anyone you've played or, or shared shared a pitch with. Um, most people are going to say like Ronaldo and Messi and yeah, all the these. Boring answers. Like, I, I would probably pick. You probably think my answer is a little bit boring, but I would say Teddy Sheringham or Zlatan. Yeah, Zlatan's always a character. Yeah. I, and the and the reason why I would say them two is because firstly. Teddy Sheridan was my idol. Mm -hmm. Like when I was growing up, I used to watch him at Millwall and all that. And he was just unbelievable. And I used to like the way he played, like hold up and like link up play and stuff. And I sort of tried to play like him a little bit. Right. So him and Zlatan purely because he's just, he's he's just a legend and, and he's still going strong at 38, 39 years old. Like it's amazing what he's doing. Like everyone always tries to doubt him and say that he can't do it and it's, it's over, but he always seems to prove him wrong. And it would just be nice to ask him like how he's how he's done it. Do you know what I mean? And just and I, and I love the fact that he's the he can be big headed and get away with it. That's that's like, the thing. Like like a lot of people like if if they try and come in and act like he's Latin, they'll be considered a, just a bit of a dickhead. But yeah, that's what I'm saying. But Zlatan's he, he just. Says, he says like all this stuff and people laugh and just agree with him. Like, like, like no one can say nothing because he backs it. But yeah. if like, can you imagine if I said one of the things he said, I'd get absolutely hanged. I'd get slaughtered, but he can say it. And he it, it just like, we laugh. I love it. I love, I love his character. Absolutely. And I, I think the media do actually help him a wee bit as well. Yeah. That, that is one of the very few things that you see like the media helping footballers with. No, he, he's, to be honest, he deserves any help that he does get because, mm. like I said, he, people can doubt him. Look, I mean, I'm not being funny. He went to Man United and was still ripping it. Then he went to America. He'd done it. 
Then he's gone back to AC Milan. And look at the position AC Milan in because of him. Mm-hmm. It's just unbelievable what he's achieved. I completely agree, mate. Uh, for me, I would have to say the player that I would self-isolate with is Alex Morgan. But obviously, obviously... Oh, I didn't know you I could put girls in there. Come on, mate. <laughs> I mean, if, I had to choose, if I had to choose a woman football, it would be her as well. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, she, she's, she's a very good player. I talk to her a lot about football. Yes, yes. She, she, she's got the good ball control. Very good ball control. I've heard that as well. Uh, anyway, uh, moving on now to the make or break round. This is the last few questions that are off topic and basically okay. a bit shit, to be honest. <laughs> no <laughs> problem, mate. Um, you're on a desert island, but you can only take one box set with you to watch. Uh, what do you choose and why? One box set? Oh, my God. This yeah. is enough. Uh, no, actually, it's not that hard. I'll take only fools and horses. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, to be fair, yeah, yeah, I see that. Yeah, I'm from like I'm a Cockney boy. I'm from Beckham. That's that's where they filmed it, and I just love the character of like the wheeler dealer people, and like they're still going about from my area. And yeah, Mm -hmm. Del Boy and Rodney, like can't they'll never get boring. I love them. Fair enough. For me, I've gone with the Lord of the Rings trilogy extended edition. See, I'm not, I'm not into all that stuff, mate. I'm a I'm a nerd though. That's that, that's <laughs> no, but dogs, you can do better than that, surely. Look at all, right. all the things that are out there. Okay, if you're talking about an actual series, it's got to be the Office US edition. Yeah, this yeah this is yeah I can understand why you choose that. Yeah, but you've got to pick something. You've got if you're on a desert island, you've got to pick something that's gonna like sort of pick your morale up, make you laugh, make you happy. Lord of the Rings does make me happy. Oh, well then, <laughs> we're different people, me and you got. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. But then again, I love watching The Office, so we'll go with it. Right, no problem. For, for the sake of this video, we'll, we'll go with The Office. All right, top man. <laughs> uh, you have to make a five-a-side team of players that you've played alongside in your career. You can be in it. Or you can be manager. It's up to you. Oh, all right. Five players I've played with. I actually, I actually done this on my Instagram the other day. The best players I've played with, and I put them in a an eleven aside. But I would go for a uh, goalkeeper would be Danny Vukovic. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. He plays for Genk at the moment. Right. I played with him at Perth Glory. Yes, um, I've heard of him. I'd put, I'd put my good mate John Potter centre back. <laughs> He's just I love I love Potsy and he obviously I used to travel in with him at Dunfermline. What a character he was. Yeah. Um, in midfield, I would put Liam Miller. Mm-hmm. Unbelievable player. Like what he could do was just ridiculous. He made football look so easy. Him and so how many is that? That's one, two, three. So I got two more. Um, I would put Andy Dorman. Oh yes, we we've spoken about Andy Dorman before. Yeah, like what he brought to Saint Mirren was unbelievable. Like he, I mean, do you remember the goal he scored against you boys in the Scottish Cup after eight minutes? I can't remember, but he, he's like a, he done a volley from like 30 yards or something. Yeah, I think it was, yeah. And S- Stephen Hughes scored the equaliser from Motherwell. I can't remember, but he, he scored some worldies. He scored them against like Celtic, right? Everyone. He was oh. unbelievable, him. And my striker, I would probably choose a striker I played with here. Like here, I played with Lamana Lua Lua. Really? Yeah, he was, he's, he was in my team two years ago here. We played for, we, we was in the same team. And he was unbelievable. He was still doing the backflips oh, when yeah. he was here. Um, what and what a character as well. Like he's obviously played at the highest level, played in the Premier League, Champions League, played for like Newcastle, Portsmouth, Olympiacos, and he was just so down to earth. Great guy. That would be that would be my five players. Uh, McGarry I, would be sub. I'd put McGarry in as sub. I'd be on the bench with McGarry. Fair enough. 
Big game, man. I mean, that is yeah. some five-a-side team. That would be my team. <laughs> Fair game. Uh, you have to make a match day playlist featuring only three artists. Who's in it? Three art the ne- the songs as well or not? I mean, you can nominate a song. Uh, I would choose. I love uh, the song that I always used to listen to before a match was um, Faithless. Oh, by Ins- Insomnia. Insomnia, yeah. Yeah, like I absolutely love that song. That proper got me going. I would say that. Um, what else would I put in? I'd put a bit of Eminem. I love Eminem. Okay, yeah. Doesn't matter what song. And you know what I'd put in there? I'd put in 500 Miles, the plane is. Hey, do you know what? Do you know why? When I first moved to Scotland, I didn't really know about that song. And then I started hearing it everywhere. everywhere. And I, 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 I ended up buying their album and everything. I had like, I love Sunshine on Leaf. I had, I love the one from that the movie. Uh, what's it called? I'm on my way, is it? Yeah. So, yeah, Mes- I would have the I would have the proclaimers. That'd be my free. They're from ten. They're from ten minutes down the road from me. Mate, have you ever met them? I've not had the pleasure, but uh, they did go to my school. Oh, they're, they're, I love I love them. Man. Do you know whenever they they come? Like I've seen them when they sing at um, what's the festival called in Scotland? Uh, Tea in the Park. See yeah. when see when they do that, like they proper get the crowd going. Like everyone loves them. Oh yeah. Uh, now, Tea in the Park is no longer a thing, but we've got Transmit instead now, so... Really? I didn't know that. Aye. Uh, it's been that long, Billy. <laughs> Tea in the Park used to be not far from where I lived in Dunfermline, I'm sure. Aye. I can remember it. Well, that's the man. I didn't know that had finished now. I, I used to it's, love that. I used to think I, it was brilliant. I can't really remember why, because, uh, I mean, I was a bit younger when it happened, but... Uh, I but tra- transmits now probably the biggest Scottish musical event, I would say. I don't know. Tea in the Park was the one for me, and I love <laughs> yeah, the song. That would be my one. Uh, I so f- for me today I've gone with because every time I think of it, I think I have a different answer. To, so for me, I've got Blossoms, Falls, and Catfish in the Bottleman. Oh well, you've got songs that you've got people ain't got a clue about. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I can start naming off some Turkish rappers. You'll be like, who the fuck's that? But <laughs> is it Serhat by any chance? No. No. There's what there, there, do you know Tarkan? No, I don't. Oh, you must know him. He's got that song called Kiss Kiss. You don't know that song. You don't know Paul. Oh, no. All right, well, fine, <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. I can't argue that. Uh, and uh, the, the final big uh, choice question is you're standing in the pick and mix aisle of a sweet shop you can only choose three sweets to put in your bag what do you choose and why I love my sweets as well by the way me too um, <laughs> uh, I'd say bonbons yes what type I, I love bonbons strawberry ones yes there we go. <laughs> they've, got, they've got to be strawberry. Yeah. Um, what else would I have? Pick a mix. They cost a lot because they're heavy, but I would put fudge in there. Fair enough. Um, fudge, bonbons, and... I do like the strawberry. You know the strawberries? The giant straws. Yeah, the big strawberries. What? Yeah, them. Is it the fizzy ones or the bland ones? No, I don't like sugar on it. Okay, fair enough. I, yeah, I would that. pick. I, I'd pick them. I'm not really. I don't really like the sugar on the sweet. I don't know why. Mm. I'm more of a just the plain sweet one. I get you. I get you. Uh, for me, I'd be strawberry bonbons all the way to the bank. Best sweets ever. They, they are abs- absolutely brilliant. Uh, I'm on a strawberry high right now, so I'm going for strawberry laces as well. And oh. yeah, there, there we go. And forgot about them. Yeah, I'll I'll go with something different. It may not be a, a great thing for the for the mixture because the dust might interfere with the taste of this. But uh, how do you feel about chocolate raisins? Decent. 
Okay, that's. Uh, do you know what? I prefer raisins than nuts, hundred yeah. percent. Completely. Yeah, like I, I don't really like all the nuts in chocolates and all no, that. I'm, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not really. Nah, I'm not a fan of that stuff. No, but yeah, that's a decent that's a decent free from yeah. you, guys. I forgot about strawberry laces. I probably would have put them in there. I'd probably change them for the strawberries. I, I, it's, it's a sort of thing you like. You get on the way home from school and go past. That's the what school. I'm saying. Yeah, twenty p's worth of strawberry laces. That'll do you for. Yeah, well, you, you, when I was younger, I used to get fifty. I remember I used to get fifty p. I could buy so much stuff from the sweet shop. If you go to you sweet shop with fifty p, what you can't get nothing. Uh, no. Nowadays you can get a hee haw. Yeah, absolute joke. Oh, it's, it's just the price of it. It's, the, it's all the inflation now. It's just... Yeah, it's, it's, it's Fredo's being 25p. Pardon? Fredo's being 25p now. That's what I'm saying. When I was growing up, they were 10p. Them and Taz's were 10p. <sighs> but now, yeah, it's ridiculous. Even I, I remember last time I went home, I'm sure Chomp was 20p or 25p. That used to be 10p as well. Yeah, I know. So it's completely ridiculous so do you have any like fond memories of a, a sort of football night out yes <laughs> right tell us do you know what? I, honestly i can tell you so many stories but a lot of them i mean one's even involving myself and yeah and i can't really i can't you know what, Dugsy, when we get off this, I'll send you a message and let you know what it is, right? But okay, the, the one I can remember, um, I was with Gary Brady. We was in Newcastle. Right. And um, we was coming back, pardon me, we was coming back from a night out. And uh, Brady went to me, come, Bill, let's go and get a kebab or something. And I was like, we was both steaming walking down the road, thinking, all right, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, we've, we're walking down the road and um, we looked over, the, over the, the side of the road and there was a pub and there was a man outside the pub in a wheelchair, right? And there was a man next to him, like punching him, like, like, like a man not in a wheelchair, beating him up. And me and Bray's like, we're obviously steaming. We're thinking like, what's going on? like is that real? Like we thought we were seeing things. And, I says, and he said to me, Bill, what's going on over there? And I, I was like, oh, I don't know, mate. Like, anyway, what happened? Two minutes later, the geezer, like the man in the wheelchair, obviously he had a mate who was inside the pub. He's come out and saw his mate was having a fight. And he started battering the guy that was beating up his mate in the wheelchair. So anyway, the guy now is on the floor. So next minute, me and Braids are in the kebab shop. We've ordered our food. And we're still like waiting for our food so we're outside next minute we look, looked over again the guy in the wheelchair he's wheeled over to the man on the floor and he starts going all like this and we're thinking what's he doing he's tried to fall out of his wheelchair like knock his wheelchair over so he can cr anyway he's he's knocked his wheelchair on the floor crawled over and he started battering the guy on the floor <laughs> me, me and Frank, oh. we're like what is going on no what way. is going on and honestly, he's battered him, but he obviously couldn't get back in his wheelchair, could he? Because it, like he's obviously out of it and that. So he's outside the pub shouting like whatever this geezer's name is to come back out to put him back in his wheelchair. And then they got he got back and wouldn't just cycle like he just pushed him home and this guy's just on the floor lying there, blood all over his face and everything. Me and Braids are like that. What have we just like when we told people the next day when we come down for breakfast, we told the rest of the boys. They were like, you were seeing, you were seeing things, and we went, nah, mate, we saw it. But we, when we saw the geezer like trying to fall out the wheelchair, we said, what's he doing? Like, what's he doing? And he's crawled, like, he's crawled over to the guy, and he's smashing him. Honestly, God's it, he was smashing him. And oh my God. Him. And I tell you, there's one other one I've got, right? Oh God. Like this, this was when I was. This is about me. When I was like 18, 19, when I was at West Ham, right. we went out, and um, yeah, we got proper drunk and um like we used to do we, like when we was living in digs we used to do shops in like the top of a deodorant can because you know like you used to have the lid yeah for the deodorant. we used to pour the shots in there and do shots and all that stuff and we ended up going out getting smashed and i came home and anyway i'm looking at my bed and i'm sad like it's spinning my bed's spinning 
So I'm, I'm looking, I'm going, like, and, I, and I've, I'm talking to myself, obviously, I'm going, all right, next time it comes around, I'll jump. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going, so it's going around. Gogsy, I jumped, missed the bed, smashed all my mouth, all my black like, teeth fell out. I've got a black like, little scar. <laughs> Everything, yeah, mate. Honestly, I had to, honestly, and then I, I had to like wait, like I had to um, try and get rid of all the blood and all that because obviously when I was at West End, they come and check your room every morning and all that stuff. Like, and there was blood like every, like honestly, it was ridiculous. Um, so yeah, I had to clean up everything and it was honestly, I ended up, I don't know why I ended up getting a loaf of bread and trying to eat all the loaf of bread. And like the, the woman at the time who was in the house found the loaf of bread in my bed with me. Like it was just ridiculous, mate. Like, so there, there are my two stories. There's a lot more, but that's the two that I can probably get away with on here. Come back next week for Bill, for the next edition of Billy's <laughs> Lazy. <laughs> I don't want I don't want you to get chucked off bloody YouTube if I start telling <laughs> if I start telling these stories. So I just leave it at them to. Oh, that that is absolutely sensational, mate. Um, now I've, I've asked you plenty of questions. Do you have anything to ask me? Yeah, I do. Um, obviously, I didn't. To be honest, Gogsy, I, I only come across stumbled across you because of what I was looking like for videos to try and do, and I, I found you, and then. Obviously, I've I've been looking, watching your streams now in this lockdown because I'm in lockdown over here as well. Like, um, and obviously it's interesting. Um, and I've watched. Um, I don't know if you watched the Fogden thing. I've watched him with his dad quite yeah. a lot. I, I know. I know. Theo, um, yeah. Yeah, I've watched him with uh, quite a lot. And your stream, I would say, is very similar to his, uh -huh. right? And I like what you do. And he does like these prediction things where football players come on and stuff. Like I see your, you, you wrote the other day, you'd like to get to 10,000 followers, but I'm sure you could get a lot more because I enjoy your stream. Like the boys you have on there, like um, Fraz, uh, what's it, Stevie? What's the other one's name with the beer? Roscoe. I can't remember his name. Yeah, Roscoe. Like you all have great banter and stuff and it's, it's, it's good to watch. So my question to you is like, are you looking to do anything similar to that? And would you be like interested in getting players to come on, predict scores and do all this kind of stuff to like try and help you get more following? Because I mean, he's a ridiculous amount of followers yeah. and I believe that you could get a lot more followers. Maybe if you did some stuff like that, um, like obviously I, I wish you could do stuff like that because you deserve it because I've watched your stuff and it is good. Thank but yeah. Much. So like, and, and if you did got that, what's your plans to like expand and, and, and get bigger? Well, oh. Oh, penalty. <laughs> Sorry about that. My fingers. No problem. Uh, well, to summarise, uh, I think what Theo does is great. And I think one of the things that's made him as big as he is, is the fact that there is a lot of people wanting the sort of England content that he created in the World Cup. And that, yeah. hit, that gave him a massive step up because he yeah. went from about a hundred thousand to about three hundred thousand very quickly i'm pretty sure and it's unfortunate that scotland doesn't really have that sort of social media thing where hmm. the thing is youtubers in scotland a uh, youtuber used lately it's youtubers are very hard to come by in scotland we've only got a handful of creators and we, we actually have our own football team. I mean, it's, it's that little amount. Whereas yeah. in England, you, you've got people that create content for the same club. Like You can have three, maybe even four different YouTubers for the same club. And in Scotland, we have, we're lucky to even, like I don't even think Hamilton Ackies have a proper YouTuber uh, so, to sort of represent. So Scotland's still very much behind England, which is probably why we're only sitting on nearly 10,000. And I would absolutely love to have more footballers on. Uh, but the thing is, I wouldn't ever ask them to spend like much more than two hours of their time because yeah. I respect that everyone's got their own time. And like I, I don't want to ask too much because um, I respect that people... But to be honest with you, Gobsy, I reckon that you'll probably get a lot of joy from Scottish footballers because Scottish footballers are a little bit more down to earth. 
Oh, okay. Uh, I, I would... I've had the pleasure of uh, playing pro clubs on FIFA with the likes of Tony Watt, Declan Gallagher, and a, a whole a whole host of others. And we've just sat and played FIFA together for a, a few nights, and it's been great. That was at the start of lockdown. But at the moment, uh, I w- well, I would love to have other Scottish footballers on, but at the moment, because of how heated the season is and the fact that we've got so many games rearranged, it's hard to ask different people on. And I'm just happy to just get a wee interview. I'll, I'll try and get I'll get I'll get Stephen McGarry to come on here and talk to you. Oh, that would be great. 100%. That would be absolutely fantastic. No, hundred percent. I'll get. He's now working at Perth Glory as an assistant coach, so yeah. I'd, I'd get him on here, no problem. Believe it or not, I've actually got him on LinkedIn. No, I'll, I'll speak to him for you. Don't worry, he'll, yeah, he'll come that, on here. That'd 100%. be great. But as for the growth of the channel, I think Scotland qualifying for the Euros this year is a fantastic opportunity for the channel to grow a, a lot more. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I have to think about that. I, because you've got that and, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't see me ever reaching the, the heights of Thogden because, well, I support Motherwell. Motherwell have 4,000 season ticket holders and I've got nearly 10,000 subscribers so there's mm. a there's a sort of there's a sort of ceiling to the sort of reach that I've got what's so your what's your aim you'd be happy to get with I would be get... del- I'd be delighted with 50,000 subscribers 50,000 uh, so I've got I've, I've got a while to go yet but I mean YouTube's not the be all and end all for me yeah. uh, I, I've managed to get through through my YouTube channel I managed to get several opportunities through the BBC. I've been on sports scene a few times. Uh, I've managed to talk to several other people in the line of work that I want to get into because I, I want to do sort of football punditry. That's what I'm most, most passionate about. Uh, I do as much as I can to sort of learn more about the game because that you, you can never stop learning about football. And like today, like what we've discussed with the Connor for World Cup, that's fantastic. I want to learn more about that. And just anything really, mate. No, man, I, I hope it all goes well for you and I, I hope it can continue to grow. Obviously, you know, I always try and tune in every so often. And I really appreciate that. Because I'll tell you now, as a creator, there's no bigger compliment than a footballer coming in, coming over to, to you to say, by the way, I really enjoy what you do online. And that, for me, is the pinnacle of what I do. I, I do whatever I do every day to get a moment to talk to a footballer and they say that what I do is good. No, it isn't. Like, I, I enjoy the banter. Like Sometimes I look at the comments and you just give it back to people that write stuff. And I love that. Like, like exactly. Some people write some stupid stuff and you give it back to them, which is brilliant, which other channels might not do because they might be scared to lose people mm. following them or listening or whatever. But you's always, like Fraz always gives it back as well. No, him, Fraz gives as good as he gets. Yeah, he, he, that's what I'm saying. He don't, he, you don't care, which is brilliant, I think. Yeah, and I mean, a, f- a few people have said to me, I, I don't like the way Fraz speaks to people. I'm like, well, if someone's saying this to him, what, what, what else do you want him to say back? That's what I'm saying. Like, he, because do you know why they don't like it? Because he's got, because he has a reply and gives it back to him. Yeah, exactly. If, if he didn't say nothing, they would like him. But you can't be like that. Like, you've got to have your opinion. No. Like, I think in the YouTube world you need a spine, and of course, because like you're on the internet basically all the time, and I mean if you put your head above the parapet, you've got a really good chance of getting shot down. So you might as well just go out in style. And I tell you another thing I like: I like the fact that you drink like your alcohol when you're doing your shows as well. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love I love watching that. I love seeing Stevie getting his shots out of his vodka or whatever it may be. Like I think it's brilliant, like that kind of stuff because it's banter. Do you know what I mean? At yeah. the end of the day, you're just four boys having a life, having banter. I think it's brilliant. Yeah, and I, I mean that's what it is. I mean, I wanted to because we couldn't go to grounds this year because of because of lockdown, etc. I thought, well, why don't we just make a glorified trip to the pub? And we just bring it to Zoom or bring it to StreamYard, the, the 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 website we use, and just see how it goes, and just have us talk about the football. We'll we'll each watch a game and see how it goes, and it's picked up, and we've gained over a thousand subscribers for it. 
at least. No, it's brilliant, man. I, I, I hope it continues to go well and I wish, wish you all the best, man, for, for this because it is good and I do enjoy watching it. You'll have to come on sometime. I know, I'm, I'm all right doing like this and interviewing stuff, but I don't know when I'm on there, I don't know what I'll be like because I've not really done that sort of stuff before. Fair enough. Well, if you ever feel but like... Maybe one day, man, maybe one day I'll, I'll try. I'll get on there with you boys. Well, Mother will play St Mirren next week. I know, but that's an easy game for St Mirren. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> if you were, you were to put a hard game for St Mirren... Uh, right, no, okay. To be honest, that, to be honest, it'd probably be a tough game because Motherwell need the points now, and St yeah. Mirren have started to drop a little bit. So mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Indeed, and uh, well, that is all I've got in terms of questions. So I'd like to thank you very much for coming on and giving me. Oh, you're welcome, man. It's a pleasure. I'm I'm happy to do it anytime. And like I said to you, any footballers that I know that are Scottish that I know that would come on here and have a bit of banter with, I'll try and get them in in contact with you. That'll be fantastic, mate. I, I really appreciate that. So No problem at all, bud. So everyone watching at home, thank you very much for coming on and enjoying our wee chat with Billy Mehmet, uh, the slayer of Motherwell, many a time. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, um, thanks, everyone, for watching. Uh, please leave a like down below if you want more of the snazzy content. Subscribe if you're new. I've been your host, Gogs89. I bet it was you, bar. See you later, guys. Take care. Now, uh, before you go, I've got a couple of things to um, 